like to thank you for coming to our symposium. This year is about new technologies. With, with our team about the presence of herpes virus infection within the inflammatory cells. Then we started looking at the white blood cells, inflammatory cells, to see which one is where, basically. And then we presented our data. And that's the data, basically. We checked with T lymphocytes, B lymphocytes. And again, we realized that there are small number of viral viruses that they may be harmful to human beings. Again, such as human cytomegalovirus, Epstein-Barr virus, human herpes simplex virus, V6. Now, after that, we identified some research models, like kidney transplant patients. Purposely, we kill their immune system. So kidney is not rejected. So that's a good research model. The immune system is off. Or uh, Down syndrome patient, trisomy 21. The immune system is defective. That's a good research model. Versus going after regular population. Or Guillain-Barre syndrome. And again, in those patients, we identified viral activities plus bacterial activities and whether or not there was a collaboration between the two, whether or not they communicate with each other. Now, it's interesting when it comes to trisomy 21 or Down syndrome patients, in 1929, they would live average like nine years and then it goes up to 12, 20, 35, but today they're living for 60 years. And again, interestingly, even with that research model, we realize that mostly it's about cytomegalovirus activity when it comes to viruses. Then we went to uh, Vincent Hospital. We identified a significant number of patients that they had kidney transplants. We followed them to see whether or not those viral activities are going to cause kidney rejection, basically, the failure of transplantation, and that was the case. Whenever we were seeing some kind of rejection, we could see some viral activity. And at that time, now we had the technology to evaluate viruses based on their activities, not only the presence of DNA. And I'm talking about messenger RNA. And then with our team in Colombia, Dr. Botero, Javier Botero, and Adolfo Contreras, we checked so many different countries in uh, uh, South America, and we realized that they have a very high prevalence of periodontal disease, but again, not too many microorganisms are involved. We did the same thing, we checked different countries like China, Taiwan, India, and these are some of those patients that basically that we were interested to study, similar to these situations. Interestingly, I traveled to Israel, and in Israel, especially in Ashkelon, we saw a very high prevalence of disease, surprisingly, similar to what we see in Morocco, similar to what I had seen in Egypt. But again, when we checked the microorganisms, always a small number of microorganisms, they were involved in the disease process, not all of them. That's a uh, well-known study which was published by our friends in Israel, and they also reported a very high prevalence of disease related to those bacteria, even in Israeli army. And as you can see, the affected people, it can go up to 5.9% of the soldiers. And this is another study coming from our friends, Dr. Estables and his team from Israel, and they were checking those, uh, the families the, um, that they live in communities. Usually they do not like to go to hospitals. Basically they are very much in, within their communities. And they reported a very high prevalence of disease with that community as well. But again, a small number of microorganisms, they were involved. Now, then I went to Egypt, and interestingly, I was uh, interested in Hatshepsut, a great pharaoh, Egyptian, who was living more than 3,000 years ago. She's a woman. We have seven pharaoh women in Egypt. She's one of them, probably she's the brightest one, with Ramses II. At her time, we have free education. She's a great warrior, but at the same time, she ensured peace in Egypt. But what she did for education and science is just breathtaking. And equality between men and women. And that's her temple, which is completely intact. And interestingly, she died because of a periodontal disease. You can see severe bone loss with her molar. Now, I was following some of these microorganisms in different countries. And similar to other groups, we reported that there are, again, a small number of microorganisms that are responsible for the disease, not all of them. You know, every day you are exposed to infection. By why we don't die, like your skin, 
because we have thousands of microorganisms that are protecting you. Your immune system is not your first line of defense. Microorganisms are. Your eyes, they are humid. But why we don't get infected every single day? Because the microorganisms on your face, on your eyes, they are protecting you. And again, our first line of defense is not the immune system or these microorganisms. So why we go after all these microorganisms? Why we are using so many, so many of these antibiotics, so many chemicals? In, even in our medical schools, we teach our residents to hate microorganisms, and that has to change. We really teach them to kill our best friends. And if one day we are going to be successful, we are going to cause lots of problems. And then uh, with the leadership of Jean-Francois Michel in France, is a teammate of mine, we put together a team of 100 people. They were all volunteer in the uh, Philippines. And we checked the kids that they had no access to uh, medicine, basically. They were sleeping in the streets. The paper was published and we had the permission from the government. That's the kind of place they were going to feed themselves, basically, those kids. No father, no mother. So that could be a good research model at the same time. And we asked them to use sea salt, basically. Sea salt, basically, because uh, we had generated a hypothesis that can we find something that is not going to kill the microorganisms but just neutralize their toxins. So basically, our team, we came from this angle that we have to stop killing microorganisms. We have to stop hating them, basically. But if you are going to target anything, it has to be targeting their toxins. Again, some of those kids, you can see them here. I mean, they were uh, violated, they were hungry, they were sleeping in the streets. And the paper, actually, that we published is called The Street Children of Manila. And we followed them for 10 years. So now the kids that they were 5 to 12, then the, the 5 was 15. 12 was like 20, 21, 22. We followed them in time. And surprisingly, in the absence of money or family support, we could not identify any more disease, at least within their oral cavity. Of course, uh, we checked the cytotoxicity of this sea salt to make sure it doesn't have any cytotoxicity. In our research team in Bordeaux, in France, we um, isolated embryonic fibroblasts that are extremely sensitive, and we exposed them to sea salt, and surprisingly, there was no cytotoxicity. And that's really extremely sensitive cell, this embryonic fibroblast, embryonic fibroblast. So it was very much encouraging. These are the kids that's... Uh, then uh, my partner, um, Dr. Leslie Levine, many years ago introduced me to Dr. Madahi. Dr. Madahi, we had a meeting in my office, and he heard about all these research projects, and he became interested to continue that. And I told him it's very expensive. We had done lots of work with a wonderful team, but if you want to continue, you really need a much, much bigger team. And he was so generous to provide it and to get involved with the team. So I'm going to ask him to continue with, with this presentation so you would see where we are, basically. But just to make the long story short, we have to stop killing microorganisms. We have to stop hating them. That's really, they are really our best friends. Actually, indeed, we are microorganisms ourselves. Your digestive system, packed with microorganisms, is making vitamin K for you. Dopamine or serotonin, epinephrine, we would not have them if we did not have all these microorganisms. So whatever we are using, whether it's a soap, all these chemicals, all these toothpaste, they go into our system, they go back to rivers, and they go to the oceans, and they will come back to chase us. So I'm going to ask Dr. Madai, my uh, partner in these research projects, to continue with the, with the presentation. <laughs> 